Another day is here, and you're ready for it. What to wear? Check. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Check. Planning for what's next and how to save for it? That's where Bank of America can help. For your financial to-dos, Bank of America has experts ready to help get you closer to your goals. Get started at one of our local financial centers or 24-7 in our mobile banking app. Find a location near you at bankofamerica.com slash talk to us. What would you like the power to do? Mobile banking requires downloading the app and is only available for select devices. Message and data rates may apply. Bank of America and a member FDIC. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Anfield Index podcast. It's been a while. There are reasons for that, but we won't bore you with them. Instead, let me welcome to your ears my friend and accomplice, Lisa Marie Hanahan. And we're going to have a little chat about whatever the hell we want to talk about in relation to Liverpool now. How are you, Lisa Marie? I am very happy it's Friday, Trevor. How about yourself? Yes, it has been a week, I can tell you that. Um, We've had a little pre- record chit chat so we both know what each other is talking about and we'll just leave it at that (laughs) and but it is it has been a time and i am very very happy to be here on episode 387 of the anfield index podcast you know i wouldn't have had the foggiest i could have picked something the 360s i could have picked 390 (laughs) i hadn't a breeze so i do appreciate you doing that my my job security trev my job security it is your USP. There's no two ways about it. We we have a very we've had a very interesting period of Liverpool history since we last spoke. In terms of, you know, we knew the changeover was coming, but just in time for our show today, yesterday we had the full reveal of the new ban, and um, it was obviously quite the media affair. Um, but it was on the back of a long old while where people were very, very irate that nothing was happening, nothing was being said, he wasn't in situ, he's not getting to work with the players. I've heard everything um, you could possibly imagine by way of grumbles. But on the transfer show with Dave, what we had been fed back, mostly from patch journals, was, look, he's on holiday. And also, it's probably healthy to have a little bit of a buffer period after Kloppo. Uh, and I want to talk about that in a second because I'm I'm in two minds about what's going on with Kloppo over the last while. Um, but nonetheless, the reveal has happened. Now, I want to ask you something. And I, I do have, full disclosure, I do have an idea of your answer before I ask. <laughs> but in the, in the, in the uh, interests of including everyone in our conversation, were you chomping at the bit and then completely devouring every syllable of the Arne Slot interview, having waited with bated breath for the guts of a month or something else? So no, I was not chomping at the bit. I mean, I was, yes, I was 
interested and, and ready to see the official announcement and, and all of those things. But but I felt that it was very understandable that there was a period between season being over, Klopp is officially out the door, and Slot coming in and, and starting for, you know, for, for a couple of varying reasons, you know. Yes. He just finished a, a very busy and time period, you know, in his previous position. The man's entitled to a holiday or vacation before before he starts what is going to be a very busy and intensive job. So, you know, it, it didn't bother me that, you know, that there hadn't been anything. And, and so, so that had not that had not bothered me in the lead. Um, you know, this whole like, shouldn't he be working with the players? What players? Are the players, they're not there. <laughs> I mean, half of them are out on, you know, with their, with their, you know, with their international teams for the Euros or the Copa America or, or on their own holidays. So just, you know, anyway, I, I thought some of that was just impatience and silly and, and people just, I think people are just so impatient and I, and just in general, not, not about this, but just in general, I, I feel that this, this, not to get on my soapbox, but I am going to dust it off and, and take a little step on it here for a moment. You know, this world that we live in, that's just instant information all the time, makes people in general, and, and I'm as guilty as the next person, impatient for things. And and I think, you know, I think that's just something that's been lost in our world is is anticipation and and knowing, you know, just waiting to, to find things out. I think it just, to me, I like a good surprise and, you know, and everything. So I was, I was fine with this bit of a delay, if you will. Although I really don't think it was a delay. I, you know, in, you know, Arnie Slot's initial, you know, or first official interview and, and all the other, you know, I think, I think that was fine. I don't know if people just kind of forgot that oftentimes new managers come in in the middle of the season. So it's instantaneous or, or what the deal was, but, I was fine. Yeah, the impatience is quite a thing. I, I remember um, when I was younger, a, a friend of my folks used to talk a bit weirdly, actually, now that I think about it, about the concept of delayed gratification. <clears throat> I, I understand, you know, what the general gist of that is. And it's it's something that, you know, in a, in, in analog times, which unfortunately we're both old enough to remember, was very much a thing. I, I mean, again, again, just soapbox adjacent. I, I, I don't think <laughs> people don't people don't understand what it's like to be f just bored off your head. Now, I was talking to you about how I spent a lot of time in hospitals over the years there, just before we went live, and um, recently again, and uh, you know, usually as an advocate. And once the drama is over, the boredom is immense, and people don't understand what boredom is. And now this is boredom with. A cell phone in your hand or, or a smartphone or whatever you want to call them. But, you know, I do recall as a kid vast periods of time where literally nothing was happening. Nothing. And there was nothing to do. And I, I don't know if it, if it helps to sort of fortify your own imagination or whatever, but one way or the other, we are not wired for that type of weight these days. And if it wasn't about working with the players, it was about getting involved and making sure the structures were in place to get deals done as soon as possible and all the rest of it. I think what we might be seeing is a fair indicator of just exactly what Arne Slot's role will be. He will be there to coach the team and that is all he will be there to do. And especially until he gets sort of the kind of clout you get from serious success. Some people might need to think about our new structure and understand what it is. There is a hierarchy there, and Arnie may not be at the top of it. It's as simple as that. We've come from an era where Jurgen very much was, uh, and that's going to be an adjustment for everyone, as is the idea of Jurgen Klopp not being the Liverpool manager. That's going to be difficult for people. And here's my little sort of old man shakes uh, fist at cloud moment. <laughs> I've been watching with a sort of a cringe on my face, the emergence of insta Clapo. Now, I know it's given great joy to a lot of people, and I see, I'm not going to say exclusively, but quite heavily, especially a lot of, 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 of 
the fans of the female persuasion just seem to be really leaning into it and loving him and loving him, loving his life and enjoying him, uh, talking about how much they love the guy and all the rest of it. And I, listen, you know, that's fair enough and I totally get it because if you if you if you can't be fond of that guy, you 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 may have a, an issue finding um, many people in humanity that you could like. But I've just found it a weird distraction. It, it, it's almost as if from the moment he left the club, he had never been more of a public figure. And returning for the Taylor Swift concert and all the rest of it, it just seemed... Uh, it, it, we got more Kloppo per square inch than we normally would have when he was actually manager. I found that in and of itself a weird juxtaposition, uh, Lisa Marie, between that and the, and the slot absence. I think that was probably adding to people's um, feelings of what's going on, perhaps. Um, what was your feel? What's your feeling about that, about the the, the emergence of Instacloppo? Instacloppo. Um, you know, when when it first happened, if you will, I was kind of like, oh, cool, you know, and I, you know, watched those first couple little videos and, and things, but I'll have to say, I, I have, now granted, I haven't had a whole heck of a lot of down, downtime the last week or so either, but um, I haven't been really watching them. Um, you know, I've just been like, oh, okay. it, it, it is kind of, I don't want to say weird. I can't think of a better word though, to, to see him that engaged on social media now. Now I understand it, of course, you know, he's not, you know, he's not with a club. He's not, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, and I did see some of the bits from the Taylor Swift concert, um, you know, and, and, you know, on one hand, I want to go, Hey, you know what? Good for you. You're living your best life now with the, you know, I don't want to call it retirement. That's not, you know, this, um, you know, period of freedom, if you will, you know, Hey, you do you, Jurgen, and, 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 you know, that if that's you, then, then that's great. But, but it, it does feel a little bit overwhelming in a way. If you think you know, every time I clicked on Instagram, there he was, you know, it was kind of like good grief, you know, the, and it, and it could just be because of all the Liverpool stuff I follow and everything that that puts him in the, you know, um, algorithm, you know, for it to always pop up on me. So um, that that could be part of it as well. But um, I, w- I guess I've been surprised to see the volume or the frequency in which he has, you know, been making the little the little videos and the posts and things that that kind of that has surprised me. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's it's not just both of us noticing. Um, it, it is a lot. It's just objectively a lot. And I felt a bit hinky about it right from the start. I'll be honest with you, because it felt as if the club, while he was still on their books, that 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 account got set up before he finished, and it felt as if while he was still in association with Liverpool. The club were going to milk every last thing they could out of the associations. Yeah, it, it felt a little bit like that. Now maybe someone can turn around and tell me I'm completely wrong. But in this day and age of of cynical business, I doubt it. I doubt I am. And it just that's that's the feel it gave me anyway. And look, it, it, I don't want people to think that I, I'm bah humbugging here for the sake of it. I listen, like you, I'm quite happy for to watch that guy do whatever and. He's very entertaining, and there was a clip there of him on a a German quiz show from back in the nineties when he was a player at Mainz, and um, the guy was trying to be. Uh, now maybe it was scripted, but the guy seemed like he was trying to get one up on him and say, "Well, you're not really a footballer. You don't play for Bayern Munich or any of the big clubs." Uh, and Klappo digs back at him really well, and he he always had that sort of extra level of charisma. Clearly, that's a guy who had that. This is going to be a huge, huge change to be absent that. And so it brings us to Arnest Slot and a chat about him and what we've noticed. Now, I think we are going to be atypical. And by the way, feel free to tune out if you don't if you're if you're waiting for people to be fawning over every syllable that Arnie has said. Uh, and to understand every nuance um that has occurred since his arrival, because I think we've both discovered that, you know, we may be unusual, um, but we have both been in that kind of category of like, 
you have to break is to break. And always oh, arrived, has he? Well, I've waited this long now. I'm, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get to it. That's where I've been. I'll get to it. <laughs> I'll see it. I wasn't going. You know, I had stuff to do yesterday, and and I, I that's how I felt about. It. And then yesterday evening, I got in. I, there are seventies movies to be watched. But you, you know, this is where my priorities were. And I was you like, have your priorities. Yes, yeah, exactly. I wanted to go and pick some strawberries. Like, I'll get to it. That's where I was. And so today, I said, I must, I'll get to it before I do the show at Lisa Marie. I kind of got to it. Ten minutes before we recorded here, I opened up the Liverpool FC homepage and went to news and opened up the thing. Now, I'm like you, I've seen a few clips and I've heard a few sound bites and that's all good. I like the one that I saw where it's Peter McDowell showing him on his phone the little bit where Kloppo is leading the, the, the cop in singing RNA slot, which it turns out 95% of them thought it was him leading them singing in his own name. But anyway, misunderstandings <laughs> aside, we know what Jürgen's intentions were. And um, it was a very, it was a beautifully magnanimous gesture and typical of the man. I think, uh, you know, slot was suitably, uh, um, affected by that and it was it, it was an interesting thing i liked about it was he didn't get too mawkish or sentimentally just say oh, that's great it just shows you what kind of guy he is and then start saying that people were singing the song as they were going by his house in in the netherlands and i thought okay this is good i like this guy he seems quite natural and he does he seems quite um oh, what's the word not improvisatory but just it capable of, of, of reacting to something and being in his own skin. And it was interesting. I don't know if you saw this, Lisa Marie, but this is one thing I did see. They showed there was a, a thing that had clips from the last four Liverpool managers So uh, and their first interviews. So Hodgson, Kenny, second time round, uh, a Jürgen and Rogers, And, you know... Really, only Kenny's speech was off the cuff because he is Liverpool. He didn't prep anything. He didn't work in walking alone into his speech. He didn't talk <laughs> in a kind of stilted way. Like I, I liked Brendan Rodgers when he came, and I liked what the way that he phrased things um, in terms of the earnestness of it. I, I admired his earnestness because it's hard to be earnest because people take the piss out of you and it turns out they might have been right occasionally <laughs> with Brendan but even Kloppo's speech or early press when you look at it it was quite prepped it was quite he knew where he was going with things it wasn't as off the cuff as you might think I don't think I think there were a lot of things that were ready when he was asked about that that doubters to believers thing that didn't just come off the, the cuff did it I think that, that was he, he, he or somebody came up with that ahead of time Right. So so here's what, where I'm going with this. It's that apart from Kenny, Slot is the most natural in terms of the responses. They may not necessarily be the charismatic, hilarious responses that you get from a Kloppo. They may not be the sort of incredible man of the people that he is responses you get from Kenny. But they seem genuine. Anything he says just seems to be He's, it, there's no act with this guy, which I really love. And it was summed up for me with the one video clip I did see. And I'm not sure if you've been, if you've, if you've seen this one, but uh, this is where I'm going to start to jump off and get, get some of your reaction to it. Because th there's a, there was a picture, a little video going around last night on Twitter. It was on the back of his arrival and uh, he's not, he's out of the club gear and he's in a kind of a, you know, sports coat and slacks kind of casual, uh, smart casual look. And he's heading up a set of steps, Arnie. And he's loping up them, big old stride on him. And then round the corner come not one, not two, but three other bald heads. And it's like, what, has he got a disciple? Has he got a bald apost apostles coming after him? And then later on today, I saw a clip and he's walking through um, Melwood. And he turns around to someone uh, behind him. He says, oh, I, there's another ball lad in there. I saw a ball guy in here. And he goes in to greet some ball guy. That's how he, the ball guy says, hi, I'm John or whatever. He goes, he doesn't care. He's just hugging him because he's a ball guy. Uh, now, I'll, I'll be honest, right? 
immediately I've got solidarity with Arnie here. <laughs> I'm thinking, I like this guy. I like him. T just talk to me about first impressions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through one or two of those questions and answers from that official interview. Now's the time to save 30% on wedding jewelry. Only on BlueNile.com. Make sure your wedding ring is the one with your pick of diamond and lab-grown diamond bands. All hand-finished and graded for excellence. Or surprise her with something blue she'll love for life, like a stunning pair of sapphire earrings. Blue Nile's jewelry experts are available 24-7 to help, from fit questions to style advice. Right now, get up to 30% off at BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. I don't need a VPN. I've got nothing to hide. But this is what I used to tell myself before I hooked up with LibertyShield.com. Not only is my home internet now fully encrypted, but I can now access all the websites I want, whenever I want, and do so from absolutely anywhere. As a Liverpool fan, I love to know I can now watch every match, regardless of whether it's on UK TV or not. My Liberty Shield VPN makes sure nothing is blocked and guarantees me super fast streaming speed throughout that match. You can get connected right now with their software package, which includes a 48-hour no-obligation free trial and instant access to their apps for Apple, Android, Fire TV, PC, Mac and Android TV. Or go a step further like I have and get one of their pre-configured VPN routers. These small but powerful devices allow you to easily connect every device in your home to VPN, making it the perfect solution for smart TVs, Mac boxes and games consoles. Visit LibertyShield.com today and use coupon code AIVPN25 to get 25% off at checkout. I would, you know, that was the thing. And again, I've only seen a couple a couple like clips i haven't had an opportunity to watch the, the full interview but but what has struck me was just as you said genuine he just seems very you know very genuine very authentic um you know i i like that you know i, I like that this it's it's he's not here to put on a show he just seems very forthright honest um, and, and I like that, that's, you know, that's what I, I, you know, I, I feel kind of what we see is what we get. And, um, and, and I did see, I didn't, I didn't hear the dialogue, but I did see the little picture that you were talking about with, you know, on the sport coat and he ran into the, with the, the additional, um, yes, bald, bald fellows there with him and then running into another one. And I, and I, it, and I didn't really see the whole context of it. So I was kind of like, right, is this something that somebody is sort of clipped together here? What, you know, what, what, what not? But, um, <laughs> so yes, but no, but I think there is just something very genuine uh, about him as, as a person. And, and, and I like that, you know, I, I like, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to play out and, you know, and, and, and what's going to come from it, you know, as, you know, as things move forward. I, I think it's going to be interesting. So the actual interview itself, the first question out the gap after saying, like, how do you feel <clears throat> and him acknowledging he was on holiday is, you know, there's been a bit of time um, between you being announced as Liverpool head coach and now, and the question he's asked is, was that deliberate? And I like this. He's straight at it. He goes, yeah, I think it is, which is what we both guessed. He says, uh, first of all, maybe the farewell of Jurgen, which is really special from what I saw. It was on the same day I left Feyenoord as well. But I did see a few things. And afterwards, there was even more, a few more farewells from what I saw, which is dead right. You know, there was, there yeah. was milk. It was milk. <laughs> there was a bit of a tour. There was. There was. <laughs> uh, so he says, I think it was fair to him 
and to the club and the supporters to wait a bit and then to come in. Uh, so immediately he addresses something with frankness, with honesty, but also that kind of, you know, you, you say what you see Dutch type thing that you come mm-hmm. to expect, uh, which I like. Um, and, you know, he's going to be, he, he's going to be a, possibly an acquired taste for some people, not because he's not an affable guy, a likable guy, a funny guy, a clever guy, but because he's not Jurgen Klopp, Lisa Marie. That's going to be the, the, the biggest thing that Arnie Slot has to get over is nothing to do with him. It's to do with the fact that he's not Jurgen Klopp. It's, it's worth acknowledging that from the start because some people will be incapable of judging him without seeing him through that prism. And of course, all of us will to an extent, but it is not a fair way to begin your appraisal of anybody is by seeing them in the in 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 always up against the sort of uh, legendary figure that's just departed. You know, I've heard a lot of talk about calling him slack if we don't win the league immediately. People can do that, and yet they can, you know, not understand that they're comparing and contrasting him to Jurgen immediately in other ways. I think it's really important that you know he's allowed to be his own man, and he has so far it seems he's making a good start. Yeah, I, you know, I agree. I think, and I think you're right. I mean, I think that was even something that I sort of said to myself when he was announced, because it did feel like kind of an underwhelming pick in a way. Um, and so, but I was like, okay, but, you know, let's let be fair. Probably almost just about anybody would have been underwhelming compared to Jurgen Klopp. So, um, you know, I kind of shifted my thinking for the most part, and I'm not going to say I haven't, you know, slipped it a little bit here and there and, and probably will continue to do so. But I have tried to make that shift myself from the get go, because, yes, you know, Jurgen's shoes, so to speak, are 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 very big to fill and, and not simply from a, a manager coaching standpoint, but from a you know, as a person, as a figure, as a personality. Um, So I think it looks like Slot is aware of that. I mean, I don't know how you could not be. I think you would would have to be very, very, um, you know, just living under a rock somewhere to to not be affected and and know that, you know, the figure that Jurgen Klopp was in Liverpool – in Liverpool, the city to Liverpool, the club over, you know, across the world. So he he seems to be coming into that, you know, aware of it and and not making any, you know, pretense, I suppose, of, you know, well, you know, in a way of like, let me put on a big show to show you that I'm, you know, I'm different or I'm better or, or I'm whatever. He's just being himself. And, and that's all I want from him. I just want him to coach the team well, A. Um, but... But as far as, as a, you know, from a, you know, as a person, if you will, just be yourself. That, to me, that, you know, that's the best thing you can do when you're following someone, you know, of, of Jurgen's magnitude is, is to just be who you are, be true to yourself and allow us to know you. And we, you know, we may all come to love Arnie just as well. Yeah, because already people have gotten on board some sort of a train where it's now received wisdom in the media that he is uh, going to be playing very similar football to Jurgen Klopp and it's going to be already there's going to be arguments that his football is going to be Klopp light and so he can't afford for his personality to be seen in that way as well I agree with you entirely and to be fair to McDowell here this interview I'm assuming it was Peter McDowell who did the interview it's very uh he, he he does address the things he needs to address. Like the question that follows up from where we were last was, you know, it's a it's important that you're your own man. From uh, he says, from what we know, there are a few similarities between your style and his, perhaps. So there he is. He he acknowledges the idea that Arnie has to be his own man. But there's the question: like, is your football similar? And I do actually. Sorry, who asked you, sir? Uh I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'd love to know what the trigger for Siri is. Uh, so uh, he, he, like, he, he says, yeah, I think there are, in terms of similarities, 
And I think that is also one of the reasons why I came in. So he's not exactly helping in terms of that uh, club all like thing. Because I think the way Liverpool scouted me, I'm not sure if that's the right word to use. They were looking for not the exact same type, but I think when something has been successful with a certain way of playing, you would like to extend this or to go on with this. This is probably one of the reasons they came to me as well. So he's doing nothing there to dampen down the flames in terms of the expectations of the football being similar. He goes on and says, yeah, it's my style, but I think it's the style of many modern coaches at the moment. Now, he talks about Guardiola and Klopp a lot and how he admires both of those uh, lads. And, you know, how, you know, he says, uh, you're, another question just before that was, you're replacing an iconic figure, uh, someone you have a great deal of admiration for. Uh, so far, I'm happy enough with all of these questions because it's they're fair and they're addressing things that need to be talked about. Uh, an awful lot of the time, it used to be a bit cringy. You'd see the local press saying, do you love Liverpool? Is it your favourite place? Like, what, what, tell us all the great things about us. And I'm sorry, I know this very well because that's what Irish people do. Oh, what do you love about us? It's so needy, I can detest it. Uh, so it's good to see <laughs> these questions here are quite, you know, they're addressing things that need to be addressed. Like, for example, in relation to that uh, question about being an iconic figure and someone you admire and you're replacing them, he says, yeah, look, I'm 45 now. I've been watching football a long time. And this has been an era where everybody looked at the Barca side of Xavi, Iniesta and Messi and the rivalry between Real with Cristiano. And I think that when that came to an end, the new rivalry in European football came because of Jurgen. He managed Liverpool and Pep Guardiola, of course, managed Manchester City. Now, I think this is really interesting, because this just shows you the amount of eyes that are on the Premier League. You know, sometimes we get a bit sick of it people talking it up, the media hacks um, on the various channels. But it is very much the biggest league with the most expensive uh, wage bills and all the rest of it. Now, Real Madrid are out on their own as the biggest club in the world. There's no arguing with that. And there are big clubs everywhere. You've got, you know, money sides like PSG and you've got clubs with great history like Juventus. But this league at the moment is still the focus and it's interesting that for him, the biggest rivalry in club football is the one that was in the Premier League between City and Liverpool. And he has spoken before about how he tried to take aspects of what Guardiola does and what Klopp does and to assimilate them into his own style. So I think when he's talking there about, you know, the idea of Liverpool having scouted him and looking for someone who can sort of do the same thing, I think what we're talking about is in more of a general sort of philosophy of how to approach football, probably mostly possession-based, the idea of pressing and those type of things. It's the modern way the game is played, as opposed to being a carbon copy of what Klopp does or what Guardiola does. Like you, I'm thinking, when he says, look, I'm 45, I've been around a while, he's kind of saying, listen, you know, I I have won a league here, I know what I'm at, and, um, you know... I." Uh, He's being courteous and saying that he admires what they've done. But there is a little subtle reminder there that he is his own man, which is exactly what we want. And yeah, once again, agree with you. Absolutely. He, you know, and I, and I think it again shows an awareness of the position that he's stepping into, you know, um, you know, he, he, you know, he's moving from, um, you know, He's, he's moving to the big time, if, if you will, you know, Premier League and not just, you know, moving to the Premier League, but but to one of the biggest clubs with, within the Premier League. And and so it, it shows an awareness of, you know, he's, you know, he's got the background, he's got the awareness, you know, that, that stepping stone of, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've studied the game, you know, I, I know what, I know what I'm about, you know, without being very, um, you know, bragging or, you know, feeling the need to like list his CV for everybody <laughs> or something, you know? So I think that, you know, I, again, it, it just is another, another tick in the plus column as far as I'm concerned for this guy. You know, it's, it's a terrible, terrible stereotype. Um, I kind of may have already alluded to it there when I was talking about the frankness that you expect from Dutch people. Look, I'm speaking only from my own personal experience of people I know and people I've seen through exposure to them on TV. 
But another thing, I think that frankness is often kind of misconstrued uh, as uh, arrogance um, in a lot of cases. Because, you know, when you speak directly, you're going to say what you're good at and you're going to say what you're bad at. You're going to say what other people are bad at. And most people don't want to hear those type of things because we surround ourselves in a blanket of sort of, uh, uh, you know, all niceties. Um, And so the directness is not often appreciated. Uh, But... (laughs) I think he's, he's possibly against his better judgment or against his own natural instinct. He's really, really trying to be very polite here in the way that he approaches these things. You know, at one stage uh, he's asked about, you know, Liverpool's interest and when it became real. And, you know, could you tell us about that moment? And he says, he, he says that those moments are private because nobody needs to know about it. I, I just like cuts it straight, just cuts it dead straight away. Uh, and, you know, goes on then and, and says loads of polite things. Um, also, he's asked, you're an official title as head coach. What does that mean for you? And this is addressing something that we've already touched on in our conversation already, but this is going to be interesting. So he says, for me, it's normal because this is the way it is in Europe and in Holland. I don't think there is much of a change between a head coach and a manager. It's just that by being a head coach, I can go in fully to the things I would like to do. So, work with the team, prepare the team in the best possible way. And me and Richard are going to work together when it comes to transfers. Not, But not only the two of us, there's a big backroom staff included in this as well. I think, for me, it is the way I have worked always. And it, it is, for me, the ideal way of working because I can use the, most of make, uh, use the most of my time by working with the team. And the time that's left will probably be a bit for the family and a bit to talk with Richard about how we can strengthen the team but we have already a really strong team. And again, right, tell me if I'm wrong here, but does that not sound to you like a guy who absolutely understands the parameters of his employment here, that he has been, he's not, he he doesn't want to diminish um, his role. He's not going to deliberately downplay his uh, uh, sort of power in the club. But he's very clearly saying we have a system now in which we're going to operate. And I think you, you would have to be a benighted soul, wouldn't you, Lisa Marie, not to understand that that was what was going to happen now because of the fact that the people returned who returned. Yep. They left because they didn't like the way things were. So when they've returned, they're not going to invite another sort of larger-than-life uh, guy and give him all the power. That's That was never going to happen. So... A lot of people were, were were crying out for this as as a we we saw how delighted people were on the the announcement of Michael Edwards' return and then Richard Hughes' involvement and then the one by one all these old uh, other guys returning to the fold. So the manager was always going to have to work in a certain way within that system, and I think that hierarchy is really clear from what he's saying there. I think it's crystal clear. And, and you know, and we probably touched on this a few months back with, you know, with the announcement of, you know, of Jurgen leaving and, and then Michael Edwards coming back in. I mean, you know, before they started the search for a new manager or head coach or whatever terminology we want to use, that was probably outlined, you know, job description, you know, <laughs> and and those parameters were put in place. So that it was very clear, you know, when they were recruiting for this position that, you know, this, these are, you know, this is the box, if you will, that, that, that you're going to be, you know, within, you know, you, you will have input and influence and, and whatever, but, but, but this is what you're in charge of. And, and, and this is what these people are in charge of. And, um, you know, and I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing for, for a couple, a couple of reasons. Um, you know, number one, just for anybody coming into a new position, it's always helpful. And I'm speaking as someone who has not changed jobs in a number of years, but, but still, you know, knowing that this is what I am responsible for. Um, and, and that is, you know, that is, that is helpful that, to be able to, to do the best that you can for for the position that you've been put in. But also we kind of saw the last couple of years, how things just got a little out of whack, if you will, with 
Jurgen taking on more and more. And I, and I think I, I mean, I know we talked about it and I, and I think I remember saying on, you know, on this podcast at some point that, you know, when you try to do just say five different jobs at one time, you're kind of not going to do any of them well. And, and I'm, and I'm not trying to knock Jurgen or, or anything, you know, that's happened in the last couple of years, but, but I think we saw that spreading of himself a little bit too thin and how it affected things. Um, and so I'm, I'm on board with this, you know, this is Arnie slot. These are his responsibilities. And we've got this other team of people that are going to be responsible for these other things. Hey guys, it's Eddie Gibbs from Anfield Index here. I hope you're enjoying this podcast and I'm sorry to call time on the show before it ends. In the current climate, it's tougher than ever before to offer podcasts for free. At Anfield Index, we produce over 75 free shows every month, which I'm confident is unparalleled in the LFC sphere. Whilst we'd love to offer everything for free, the production costs now make this impossible. That said, we don't want to follow the model of other channels and lock all of our content behind a paywall. So what we've decided to do is to continue offering every show for free, but cut that offering to 30 minutes on our longer shows. So to get all of our shows in full and enjoy the best of everything we have to offer, we really hope you'll consider supporting the channel and signing up at AnfieldIndexPro.com. For about the price of one cup of coffee, you'll get every podcast in full with zero ads. You'll also get access to our LFC VIP community where you can enjoy live podcasts, engage with our podcasters, and chat with other Reds in real time. So that website again, anfieldindexpro.com. Join today. Sports Social Podcast Network. Grand Canyon University makes earning your degree possible with over 130 academic programs for traditional campus students with more than 80 bachelor's programs offered online. GCU provides you with the personal support you need from complimentary unofficial transcript evaluations within 24 business hours to scholarships, academic support, and your GCU graduation team led by your own university counselor. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu.